Next Legacy. It's always fun when we can be able to break out a show and celebrate music and entertainment and movies and sitcoms and all kind of other things, but also have a wonderful guest that is uh, in the entertainment lane that we definitely want to get to know. Welcome, everybody, to this edition of Branded After Dark, brought to you by NextLegacy.com. I am Brandon in the building, and uh, the, the the guest that I have is just kind of watching her grind as far as uh, just placing her name in this uh, entertainment realm and some of the things that she's done, not just taking a look at her websites or I M D profile as far as all the things that she has upcoming, um, you know, but I've always had a appreciation for women doing bigger than life things, and I think if uh, if we all, not just as males, but I just think in general, because, you know, I, I just think in general we have just so many male-dominated lanes that we need to make sure that we acknowledge our females and making sure that our ladies get the proper due and not just the roles that they take and portray, um, but also in uh, financially as well because, if, I don't know, I'll just keep it real. If you're, you're doing the same thing and you're a male, you, females get the same rate of pay. Um, you know, I always, always believed in, like, should dictate how much you is presented financially and, roles and things like that. I mean, if you're good, you're going to get that role, and you should be able to get that role, especially if you're good. You can't walk into it accepting that or saying that, hey, you know what, because um, Ayanna Johnson, I need to get in. I, I know she has that work ethic that is appreciative, and I think we should make sure that not only do we give her credit, we should give all the ladies out there credit as well. And um, and that's what I want to do tonight. So we're going to spotlight Ayanna Johnson, who goes by the name of A.J., A-Y-J is how it's pronounced. And uh, you can check her out by going to ayanajohnson.com. You can check out her uh, website, which has all of her social media, IMDB information, and all that good stuff. And I want to welcome her to this edition of Branded After Dark, brought to you by The Next Legacy. AJ, how you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just um, it's just like I said, I just feel like when it comes to the entertainment business and the business of watching ladies grow and perform, I think we got to make sure we give our ladies credit where credit is due. So that's why literally I sought you out and I saw what you were doing, and I was like, okay, I need to make sure that I let this lady know that she is heavily appreciated. Well, I really appreciate that. I'm over here doing my Sunday shout. Screaming, amen. <laughs> 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 your Sunday, your Sunday shout you. on a Wednesday. I love it though. I love it. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing because you know we we you know what? Let's be honest. We we need a lot of that. We need we need a lot of a Sunday prayer on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think we need all exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you doing? I am wonderful. I'm blessed. I really am. Absolutely, that's awesome. That's awesome. So for the listeners out there, because I know. In, in your neck of the woods in the Carolinas, um, I know there's a lot of people who have appreciated and seen your work, but for um, a lot of people, not just in the States, but globally, because we're we're, we're reaching so many different people across the globe, um, tell, the, tell the folks a little bit about you. Well, my name is Ayanna Johnson, and I go by AJ, as you mentioned, spelled A-Y-J, and I am a local actor in the North Carolina area now, but am willing to travel wherever. <laughs> uh, I mainly do um, film and commercials and some print. Um, I pretty much try to branch out into um, as much of the film industry as I can as far as uh, different um, media. So I have commercials airing currently. I have PSAs airing currently. I have... Um, a TV show airing on Amazon Prime, um, a web series. So basically, I'm trying to do it all. <laughs> trying to put my feet in the in the cold cold ocean. And trying to do it all is an understatement. I mean, uh, we're we're gonna go like through your bio, like you know, as we go through our interviews and things like that. But spotlighting just being into like your your passion for acting. When when did that come about? And 
what what made you feel like you know what with everything that I am doing, um, this is this is something that I really need to express and and get out there to uh, others. I've been acting since around 2000. I kind of accidentally fell into it. Um, I was mm-hmm. I used to do promotional work as a brand ambassador, and the company that I was working with um, asked me if I was interested and doing a TV show, so I thought, yeah, sure, why not, I'll try it. And I got on set and froze to death and absolutely loved it, <laughs> and I've kind of been hooked ever since. Uh, I'm a little uh, of an introvert. Maybe I'm a lot of an introvert, and that's kind of surprising to some people when, when I say I'm also an actor. But I love acting because it allows me to transform into other people um, mm-hmm. that – I'm not myself, uh, but I get to portray other characters, and it's a challenge, and I love challenges. Uh, Acting is not easy, for me anyway. (laughs) Acting takes a lot of um, study uh, and practice, and it's not easy. And I just love the challenge of being able to commit to something and, and throwing myself completely into my character. When you say it's not easy, I, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, I, I guess in a lot of ways they, they can attest to that, but also some people just don't know the work that is put in on a regular basis, not just to be able to book a gig, but also to once you get that gig to be able to be your very best in the confines of what they want you to do because, you know, the producers are going to kind of tell you what they want from you, but then you got to bring the best out of yourself so how do you juggle that? Like, you know, once you get said gig, how do you how do you actually manage to just let that light shine bright, I guess you could say, when it comes to uh, just your skills and, and, and get them to show, I guess, in a, in a lot of ways, more of what you have to offer? Well, I believe the director is the boss. So, you know, they tell you what they, what they want, and it's my job to give them what they want in that character. Um, But at the same time, sometimes you may have an idea of what that character should be. And most times you have a great relationship with the director where they're open to your interpretation of it too. Um, And that's when it's magic, when you can take what they want and and add your own little nuances into it. And then it's like, oh, that's what I've been looking for. And, you know, sometimes they don't even know Um, what they're looking for, or they may have one thing in mind and then you come into an audition or you come onto set and you bring something else and they're like, where did that come from? That's what I want, (laughs) you know? So sometimes it's just a collaboration and and, um, just being comfortable within yourself to deliver that. You really have to kind of let your inhibitions go, Um, I study some acting techniques that tell you not to judge your character. So, Ayana, I cannot judge my character. I need to deliver my character in all of its rawness. And Mm -hmm. that's what I try to do. So you have, you have, you know, I went through your IMDB information and all the stuff that, uh, that you've done and, some things that's in uh, in post production, and some things that's filming right now, and some things that's completed. And for a woman who's in the early, you know, two thousands or whatnot, uh, literally to now, you know, I, I, here we are, twenty sixteen, and you know, looking at here at some of the things that you've accomplished and done, it's you know, you've done a lot. I mean, and when I say a lot, it's just you know more than what some people do when they have aspirations and and they they want to be able to be seen. Um, do you, when, when it's certain roles that is presented to you and you have, like, an opportunity to take a role, do you kind of sit and contemplate over it um, instead of just kind of jumping at the first opportunity you get? Because I know there's, like, a pecking order when it comes to that, too, so you got to really be careful by what you book but also what you portray in those things, too, right? Yes, yes, Exactly. So I mentioned earlier that you can't judge your character once, but that's after you've accepted the role. There's certain things mm-hmm. that I will not do or, you know, I don't want to portray. Um, there's some things I've played a prostitute before, and, and um, 
I love the storyline. So um, because there was redemption at the end for that character, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, but I don't do um, nude scenes or, you know, things like that, sexual scenes. But that's just my choice, you know, not every mm-hmm. that choice. And so that limits a lot that I can do because apparently everybody wants to show that right now. And I'm not mm-hmm. trying to have my body displayed out there for everyone to see. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, so there, there is – I don't accept everything I, I'm offered. Um, and – I'm, I'm trying to build a brand, and therefore I'm very particular about the the characters or the roles that I accept. If that makes sense. Amen to that. Amen to that. Because I feel like this, especially with with any role that I feel like anybody play. I mean, anybody do something you want to do, and I think the key word, and, you know, that you said is just brand. You're trying to build a brand, and and some things you just won't do if it's morally, ethically. It's just, you know, in general, there's a role that I feel like everybody can and should play in life, but also if you have a opportunity to do what you're trying to do in this business, which is grow and, and take on leading roles and things like that, I feel like, you know, you take the role or you look and see what they're, they're, they're offering and you bring your own interpretation to it. But I love the fact that you have standards because, you know, Keep it real, AJ. There's a lot of people that don't in in the, in this business, and they they're willing to settle for whatever, whenever, however, and whoever, exactly. and in general. And, and to me, I just think that you know we need more women like you who will just be able to kind of stand up and just say, hey, you know what? These are the roles that I'm going for, and there isn't anything that I will do to uh, to alter that in any way. So I think that you've got to get a lot of credit for that. Thank you. Thank you. I think a lot of people feel desperate in this industry. Maybe desperate is a harsh word, but they re- they want to make it. You know, uh, we all want to make it. We all want to be successful in our chosen career. Um, and sometimes I feel that actors um, do what you were suggesting, that they just take roles just to kind of put mm-hmm. their name out there, get their face out there. Um, and maybe that works for some people. I just, if it takes me forever or if it never happens, then so be it. You know, whatever God has for me is for me, and I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to jeopardize my beliefs to get that. (laughs) Amen to that. Ayanna Johnson is our guest on Brand After Dark. She goes by the name of AJ. She brought to you by AyannaJohnson.com. Make sure you go ahead and flood the airways, traffic, go straight to her, uh, her website, Click on every single social media link that she has and, and follow her movement. And um, one question that I have, when you when you take a look at a lot of the roles that's out there, you know, situation comedy, some movies, and, and, and you, you were talking about Amazon Prime earlier, you know, there's a lot of series on Netflix, and there's a lot of different avenues for, um, you know, people like yourself to be able to have these particular opportunities. So, when you when you do go through your um your auditions is it is it more geared towards okay well i'm going to you know i'm going to show the world what i can do as far as building up your brand so to speak as far as you know setting things up or how do you go about your your business day do you have you know is it just you or is it just based on like you know you you got a team in in place with you to be able to kind of help you navigate through certain things no it's just me <laughs> Um, I spend acting is a full time job whether you're working or not. I spend a significant amount of time looking for the next gig. So okay. if I'm not setting a script or auditioning for a role, um, I'm looking for a role. You know, so you can't find it if you don't look for it. <laughs> and um, there are some sites that actors use to look for um, the next role, and you can submit for them, and then you get audition requests and um, things have changed since late 1990s and early 2000s where everything used to be in person. You had to do everything in person, but now you can do a lot electronically. Um, that's mm-hmm. wonderful because you are um, you have a lot more options. You have a lot more competition as far as who's right. submitting for these roles. Um, so I search, submit, audition, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> until I get the right one. Um, and then there's the callbacks. Now, callbacks are, are done in person, and so I travel a lot 
usually between New York and Atlanta. I haven't had to go past um, Atlanta at this point. Um, and the farthest west I've gone is Tennessee um, for work. So I haven't had to. I'm kind of stuck on the East Coast. I'm trying to branch out to the rest of the country. There's so much work out there. Um, although I did just join an um, interactive theater group, and we performed in California last week, um, okay. which was cool. But that was really my first experience on oh, yeah, the West yeah. Coast as far as I think it's concerned. Yeah, we got to get you more out here on the West Coast, too, where I'm at as well. But um, but you would be open, like, if you had an opportunity to be able to link up with the right management team or a management group that um, you, you would be able to embrace that and just, you know, kind of work through uh through it as long as it felt right and the opportunity was uh, was 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 a good look. Okay, it, saying it, that because we got you mean, know we we got. Now I'm just gonna say we got like you know more than hundreds of thousands of listeners and, and we're pretty well connected. But I, I love the fact that you are opening opening up to uh, you know opportunities and, and I think that's a good look. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that the right team will make magic. I think. There's only so much that I can do on my own, and um, I'm grinding right. as much as I can on my own now. Um, mm-hmm. I've spoken to people, some working actors, about when is the right time to get into management and, and things like that, and and am I even marketable for management yet? So I've been I've been discussing some things with some people just to kind of fill my way around this industry. Well, I'm, I'm looking at your body of work so far, and I'm like, wow, like, do you really need one? But at the same time, it's just, you know, we're all trying to evolve and grow because, I mean, <laughs> God, young lady, the work that you've already put out and, and that's in play right now, and it's just like two, 2016 has been a very, very busy year for you as well, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> 2016. A lot of my actor friends are using uh, Sweet 16 this year because it's been really great. So I'm going to steal that from some of them. <laughs> Sweet 16, 2016 has been awesome. Hopefully it carries over to 2017. So I'm working working on that. It's, it's really one month at a time for me. <laughs> a woman that does not stop, and she's going to make sure she embeds herself into this business the right way. Ayanna Johnson is our guest on Branded After Dark, brought to you by Next Legacy. You can hit her up on her, face, on her Facebook, all things social media. You can actually go to ayannajohnson.com. And AJ, it, it says on here your, you know, bachelor's degree in psychology, um, career in healthcare supply, chain of logistics, and degrees and everything like that. And this is your your pursuit of a passion that you have. And it's just, you know, for the young ladies out there who say they can just basically just have a parallel life and just do one thing, is it is it better for not just women but men that's inspired by women to? Do more and be more at the end of the day. I think it's important to to try things. You know, you can't just stick to one thing because sometimes people have passions for multiple things. And I think it's important to try and see real, really where you fit in this world. You you really don't know until you until you go. For instance, I didn't really know. I thought I had a passion for missions, too, um, mm-hmm. and I really didn't get a confirmation on that until I went on my first mission trip. You know, so sometimes you just have to try try different things that you're feeling something tugging at you, <laughs> you know, to jump into that field. I'm okay right. with trying things. <laughs> I'll try, I love try it. anything love once. I love it, and and I have to make sure that I give you the utmost respect, blessings, and, and props for doing a lot of volunteer work for the Habitat of Humanity, um, and you take a lot of time out to do that. So, you know, again, with all the things that you do, how do you manage, like, your time? And I know it's, it's you know, I, I know it's a cliche question, and I know, you know, the answer is going to probably inspire a bunch of us, but I'm just trying to learn a little bit more about you because, you know, all the stuff that you're doing right now, like a lot of women should be appreciative and inspired that there is women out here not just trying to build a brand for themselves, but to be able to have a footnote that others can be able to just be uh, inspired by. So, I mean, how, how do you do all this stuff in a day? So I live I live by my calendar. I, <laughs> I live by as soon as I, I get something, I put it on my calendar so I don't make any conflicts or 
anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. And I prioritize based on, um, well, a couple of things. I believe in commi- um, following through with my commitments. So if I commit to it, I'm going to do it. Um, right. So once it's on my calendar, it's pretty much that. I don't like changing things unless it, I absolutely have to. I believe integrity is important. And if you say you're going to do something, then you do it. Um, so, like, Habitat and Missions, of course, is volunteer, so you can, you know, kind of um, come and go with that. But even with that, there, if I sign up to volunteer, you know, they're expecting me to be there, and um, and I'm taking up someone else's spot. So I try to follow through with those whenever I sign up for that. And, and I already know that with Habitat, they work Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, so I try to only sign up when I can or when I know I'm not going to have a conflict. Um, right. As far as mission trips, of course, those are months in advance, so I, I can put those on my calendar. Uh, as far as working full time, I actually took the leap of faith last May and quit my career of 17 years in healthcare supply chain and logistics and um, started grinding full time in acting. So that was May of 2015. Uh, so that was a huge stress that was filled with a lot of anxiety when I made that decision. <laughs> I cried a few <laughs> tears because uh, I was so uncertain about it. Uh, but mm-hmm. that's where God told me to do it, and I believe he did. And after talking to some family members that I trust and to be wise, um, I went ahead and turned in that resignation. So that's not really – I don't really have an issue with um, – Time. Other than that, some of my friends may disagree. <laughs> <It's> already, <laughs> um, a lot of people ask me, "So where are you? Are you, are you in town?" Before they ask me anything, the first text message says, "Are you in town?" <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I'll say yes, and then they'll ask me whatever they they need. But um, yeah, I live by my calendar. That's that's the only way that I can survive. <laughs> well, well, that's <laughs> good though because you know there. There's a lot of us out here in this in this world, and, and as chaotic as this world is, I, I feel like, a, you know, the, the best thing that I feel like any any of us can do is to not just pursue the passion that you have, but, you know, just take a step back and look in the mirror and not even just, not just, you know, conform or confine yourself to just doing what other people expect you to do. Do something that's going to make you happy and build your self-esteem and build your life and build your career and build your family values up to the point where um, it's it's going to it's gonna make not just yourself feel good, but just, you know, everyone around you is going to feel that radiate when you can be able to do these things. And I, and I think that's important. And I think you're doing uh, um, yourself and others that's, that's inspired because we're watching you do those things right now, which is good. But thank you. I try. I don't. I really don't do anything for anyone who's watching. I I do all of this for myself and for God. I hope I'm pleasing to Him. Um, mm-hmm. If anybody else benefits from it, great. <laughs> but I really, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I'm satisfied with who I am. So let me let me ask you this, and and I and I feel like because you're in this business that I feel like I can ask you this question, and I've been struggling with this for a while. Actually, there's two questions, but I'm gonna ask you this first one: is what what is what is your opinion about reality shows? Once it began, how it evolved, and where it is now? How do you feel about it totally? So I don't watch TV. <laughs> So I'm so the worst person to ask this question. <laughs> I really don't watch TV. I do. I have been watching a lot of Netflix lately, but I really okay. don't watch TV. Um, so I can't really tell you firsthand about reality mm-hmm. shows. I only know what other people say about them, and I don't think it's fair to speak on something that I don't know personally. Oh no, I hear okay. you. I hear. But but you know what? Since since he's you know, I'm gonna give you my I'm gonna give you my interpretation and my opinion about it because I've I've Let said it for it. years, but <laughs> I've said it for years. But just in general, I feel like it, I mean it's it's hurting the brand of of 
acting in a sense because it, it it's not just removing jobs and you, you have, like, you know, to me, I think it's, you know, instead of calling it reality shows, call it improv because I think a lot of us know <laughs> when, when you watch certain things, it's not really real. Um, you know, people aren't really yeah. saying that. I think they're doing it just based on shock value. So, you know, it, it diluted in a lot of ways the, 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 the brand of not just television but the effort that I know a lot of you and others make when it comes to acting. So that, that's my opinion about it. Should it go away? Lord, yes. It should have been away like 10 years ago, <laughs> in my opinion. Like, it, it should have just been gone, period. But, I mean, and I'm I saying that the because there's so many – yeah, I mean, exactly. And and to me that's just the that's just the way I feel. I know there's a lot of other people out there that believes in what what I'm saying right now, but then again, there's so many people that will spike up their ratings by watching chaos. You know, that's that car yeah. wreck that's down the street that people are gonna slow down and, you know, watch. And to me it's just, you know, it's hollow. It doesn't it doesn't feel real. And I'm saying this to tell you that you know, we got to make sure that, the you know, television and movies and entertainment to the people that's been putting in the work and the effort that has been for so long. And I just don't like seeing 15 minutes of fame last a little bit longer, <laughs> in my opinion. So that's just me. Yeah. I will say from an actor's perspective that I've noticed a lot lately that some people re- request um, talent that have a lot of followers on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and right. stuff like that. Um, which I guess makes sense from a business standpoint because they want someone who can market them, who can, you know, promote them. And that makes sense. But um, but I think it kind of adds to the trauma of the reality series that you mentioned. Um, because but here, but here's, what I, here's what I say to that, though. And drama sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's what I say to that. I say, you know, people that's looking at certain uh, people who have notor- notoriety, some fame, they got some followers and things like that. But AJ, let's also keep it real too. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of fans bought on social media. You can buy a bunch of likes. That is true. You can buy a bunch that of followers. True. You can buy you can buy a <laughs> bunch of stuff. That's not that's not hollow. And you can also look at whatever you post. If you got a million followers, post something on whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your next hype is, and you only get maybe like 10,000 likes out of your million followers, what does that tell you? That tells you you got like a hell of a lot of thousands of people who are not paying attention to what you're doing, literally. Yeah. You know, you get a million, well, you know, the percentage is low. <laughs> well, always <laughs> believe it, uh, always believe it, uh, you know, quality, um, not quantity. Like, you can have a certain yeah. amount, but if they're all, like, vibing to what you're doing and they're all proactive to your movement, then to me, that's, you know, I would rather have, excuse me, 10,000 followers, and if I get, you know, half that, if not 60% of, of them either retweeting or supporting the movement that I'm doing, then, that, you know what, that's a win for me because you you get a little bit more in contact with whoever. So, you know, the more you more people you get on social media, you know, that that that's been a flaw system for a while. So, you know, I I kind of look at it like that. But, you know, it's it's you know, I I found you through social media, so, you know, I I I'm going to be like one of many <laughs> many 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 more to uh, you know, show that genuine support. So, you know, from day 1, the well, moment that we that. added each other, I was like, "Hey, you know what? I got to get you on. I got to figure out something to do." to kind of help. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people out here that want to help and support, so I think that's important. Yes, I, and I really appreciate that, you, you reaching out. Um, and you're absolutely correct for all your listeners. On day one, you were interested in, in helping, and I really appreciate that, and supporting. That's that's uh, a verifying. I appreciate that. we got to find a way to help each other in this world, too. So, you know, I think that's important. Yana Johnson is my guest on Branded After Dark, brought to you by Next Legacy Radio. Make sure you go ahead and check out ayanajohnson.com. AJ, I got another question for you, and this one is the evolution. Okay, I know you say you don't watch TV, but I know you have watched TV in your lifetime, right? I, I, I think yes. we can confirm that, right? Okay, I want to confirm yes. that. 
All right. So do you remember the days and in, in the the days and let's see, I'm 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 talking bad about myself because I'm going way back. Remember the days where sitcoms were just real sitcoms and the days where documentaries were just like pure documentaries on certain things yeah. and the days where even music soundtracks gave you a certain vibe because of a movie that you saw and the music that was attached to it and all that good stuff. So reminiscing, you know, I found, you know, that, that's why I kind of started off shout to my girl Patty LaBelle um, with Stir It Up because, you know, it reminded me of classic Beverly Hills Cop movie. So, you know, my question to you is, AJ, like, when we, when, when we talk about memories and, and reminiscing about certain sitcoms, everybody knows, you know, you can go way back from I Love Lucy to the Cosby Show to Sean mm-hmm. Payne to whoever. Um, what happened to those? What, what, and, and, and can we ever get those kind of feelings back? And I know it's because, you know, you know, it's outdated, but a lot of people just reminisce and they got memories based on that because those were those were the days where it just mattered, like Family Matters and all yeah. those other classic sitcoms and those original ones. Good times, so so on and so forth. What happened to those? Some for some reason, being wholesome just no longer was interesting. Because if you think about those sitcoms back in the day that we really loved, they mm-hmm. taught us something. You know, we watched it, we enjoyed it, we were entertained, and we learned at the same time. Or right. we imagined ourselves in those situations, like the Cosby Show. I mean, I wanted to be an obstetrician when I was a kid because of the Cosby show. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, shoot, he can deliver babies, I can deliver babies. That's what I want to do. That's right. Um, That's right. And it, it it allowed us to see ourselves in the future and, and see what we wanted in life. And everything was wholesome back then, you know, and – Something changed where that was no longer entertainment, that no longer sold. Drama was it, you know, and again, it went to sex and violence. And um, Now, I, I would love a good thriller. I love action films. I'm all for it. I, I would love mm-hmm. to play the villain, um, the villain, super villain on some kind of Marvel show someday. I love you for that. I love you for that. You know what? You took one of my questions I was gonna have, but we gonna we gonna get Uh to that later because you did. You read my mind. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. But I love you for saying that. But continue. Go ahead. But uh, so I'm saying, yeah, I love those types of things, but I miss the quality of the shows from back then, where you can laugh and still um, learn. Um, at the same time, and still imagine life in a better place. So I grew up in North New Jersey, so that's like, yeah, it's North. I love it. I will always be from North, and I will always claim it as home. And um, But it wasn't like the best place to grow up. But to be able to ignore your surroundings and turn on the Cosby Show and imagine a better world for yourself, it was mm-hmm. – I love those days. I've missed those days, too. I really do. Um, I do. Maybe I'm not on TV the, anymore. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I miss the days of, you know, we had an alternative. I mean, if you want to go back to the 70s yeah. sitcoms, Good Times gave us a vibe yeah. of what it was really like to live the way they lived. Um, check to check, rent to rent, whatever it was. We, we, we felt that we related to it, but also what the Cosbys gave us back then was an alternative to that. And I think, you know, a lot of people was kind of like, oh, my God, like, you know, there's an actual doctor, a lawyer, there's family, there's they're cool with their in-laws, what? Who does that? <laughs> like, you know, so that was really new, but it was so authentic and it was so pure, and the yeah. people that was casted was perfectly casted for that because everybody had great chemistry at the time. And, you know, there were so many, so many memories and different moments and, you know, you even go backwards to the black and white, too, you know, the Patty Dukes and the Mary Tyler Moore shows and certain things. Mm-hmm. And, and what you said, AJ, is wholesome. It was family-oriented. And not only that, I'm going to keep it solid again on Next Legacy Radio, is, you know, there wasn't many alternative channels, too. You only had, what, five, ten channels mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> let's keep that real. We didn't have a lot. So when we didn't have a lot, we all sat down together and watched what was on there. 
and we talked about what was on there. And I think because we have too much nowadays, sometimes people tend to forget or they don't appreciate yeah, it's, it's or they take overload. advantage of. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree. And, and, I, and I think that's important for, you know, our listeners and, and young viewers to understand. Like, you know, when we when we talk about, you know, the memories of what we had back then, we didn't have much, but we had each other. Um, and it can still be that way again because even though there's a hundred million different channels now, we can still narrow it down to the to the few cycles that we can be able to create ourselves. And um, and I think that's important for our, our our listeners and our viewers as far as what's going on when it comes to options and opportunities. Even though you have a bunch of options and different choices, you know, you still choose family and having that moment together at the end of the day is important, right? Absolutely which we don't usually get nowadays either. Everyone's sure. on the run, you know, and no one sits down and eats dinner together anymore. You're eating in your own separate rooms and watching TV and, you know, or stuck in your smartphones and things are so drastically. Yep. Now there's a disconnect instead of that family unit, your family just by last name. And um, that's unfortunate. But hopefully we can get But you know what? AJ, I believe I believe we can turn it around. Three sixty degree turn. It's coming. I feel it. We have no choice. You we gotta it? get better than where it is right now. I'm like, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking I'm looking forward to it and and a couple more questions. We have AJ, aka Ayana Johnson, actress extraordinaire with Next Legacy Radio right now. Check out our website, AyanaJohnson.com. dot com. Um I I feel like you know, I I could talk to you forever, but one 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 thing that I gotta I gotta ask you is, you know, you, you know, you know, I I kind of like went through your bio, so you being a adrenaline junkie, um, <laughs> how did how did this how did how did this kind of I mean, skydiving and jet skiing and all that other stuff, like I mean, skydiving, it can't do it, can't do it. I can do in, <laughs> indoor skydiving, I'm down, I'm down for that. We can do that, but skydiving actually, what what how, how, how did you get to the point where it's just like, you know what, I need a, I need a rise in what I'm doing right now. So, you know what, tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so skydiving, I jokingly say my mom was going through a midlife crisis, so we went skydiving, and she was, you know, dragging me along with her. Um, my mother, my cousin, and I all jumped out of a perfectly good plane at the same time. Um, and it what? was kind of a bonding moment. <laughs> you know, that's wow. something we all got together. Um, wow. Some people think we were crazy. It's like, what if something happened to all of you at the same time? But it was, oh, that was like the best feeling ever. Um, I can't wait to do that again, actually. Now, I will say, as you read in my bio, I don't jump by myself. That's just a little no. suicidal to me. <laughs> I need a professional to pack my chute because... In order to jump by yourself, you got to pack your own shoot. I'm not trusting mm-hmm. myself with that. I need to trust somebody who's done this like a million times already. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it's so much fun. It's just like when you're up there, it's, of course, you've, you've flown on planes and stuff and you looked out the window, but it's not the same. That glass is like separating you from, you know, the air and and the beauty of everything around you. I mean, you have a panoramic view of the world at that moment as you're, like, free-falling. Um, and just the rush of the air on your face and you have to force yourself to breathe calmly in order to breathe. <laughs> I don't know. It's something about that entire experience that I absolutely love. I was nervous. <laughs> I, I will admit, on my way up, I was thinking, what am I doing up here but I couldn't like <laughs> back out. I couldn't. You know, I had my family up there with me. You know, I couldn't punk out, so I had to go through it. And I'm glad I did. It was it was the best. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you did it, and you're and you're still with us to be able to talk about it. Cause yeah, I would have stayed up there. I probably wouldn't have left. Family or no family, I'd be like, you know what, you guys, hey, go do it. Good luck, cause I can't do it. I'm not. I'm well, not. when you're I mean, I, somebody. <laughs> you really yeah, don't no. have a choice. So, I mean, once you get to the end of the plane, you've given up all your free will. 
Uh, because you're attached you know to the guy. So once he attaches yep. himself to you on the way up, mm-hmm. you're stuck. You're going out that plane. Hey, <laughs> <So. laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you're never lying. Once you get up there and once you put a chute on you and you get strapped in, man, that, that's pretty much go. That's pretty much you're it. Done. But they <laughs> scare you. I don't, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's intentional, but two people jumped on their own. Like I'm sitting in the front of the plane. And two people were trying to just get their jumps in, so they were jumping and going back up, jumping and going back up, just trying to get their numbers up, which I thought mm-hmm. was crazy at the time. And so for you to go up for the first time about to jump out of a plane and then the door opens and someone just falls, I was like, hey, see you later, see you on the ground. It's like, what just happened? Who <laughs> 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 just does that? Like, who opens the plane door wow. and just like, peace out? So, yeah. And after getting over that shock <laughs> of seeing that, it was my turn. But I got it all on tape, so I get to watch it over and over again and um, laugh and relive the excitement of doing it. So I can't wait to do so you it. Haven't put it on, you haven't put it on your website or YouTube yet? Um, I put it on YouTube, but the company, um, they actually put it to music. There's like a whole oh. interview and they put it to music and so you know the copper, copyright laws and such so they right, um, right. they have it on lockdown on YouTube because they put two songs on it but <laughs> so oh, that's, it's on that's silent great. right now I might put I it on my it. website though you know what I'm gonna put it on my website there you go there you go put that up there it's it's you your it's your it person out. on there enjoy that let let your fan base and your growing fan base enjoy that that would be good that would be good a couple of quick questions with aj before we let her go and um now we you did mention marvel you did mention uh what 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 role would you like to play if there's any as far as if you're if you're into like heavy in the comics or you know you've seen all the movies and you know that's like one of those you know it's it's one of those uh pop culture type of moments especially what marvel has done with their movies and things like that as well yeah. and you know, I'm closely connected with, you know, Pixar and ABC and stuff like that, too. So if, if, if they're listening, which I think they are, mm-hmm. if they're listening, and if there if there is a particular role that you would, you would like to play, uh, let, let them know. So forever, I wanted to play Storm. And then um, I, of course, Holly Berry was playing Storm for the longest time. And then last year... I saw that they replaced her with someone else for the the next one, and I was like, why? <laughs> why did I not know about this? <laughs> um, Interesting. But I do see myself play. I I love action films, and I I love stunts, and I have not had the honor of doing my own stunts yet, but um, I do want to, and um, I I always see myself playing the female villain, like in Man of Steel, that lady that was beating up on Superman, that was me. The whole oh, time was, I, was looking, she, I was watching she, the movie, I was like, that's me. I want to do that right there. <laughs> she she was badass. Um, she was badass. Like, I loved her more than I actually loved the actual, uh, you know, the villain, villain guy. Like, you know, the yes. general, I, I loved her a lot more than, yeah, she was ruthless. I loved her, though. Like, she was good. <laughs> she was good. I love things like that. I I really want um, – that is one of my goals. That's on, on my list of things to do before I leave this earth. That's the type of role that I would like to play. Uh, I do a lot of drama now, but I really do want to uh-huh. get uh-huh. into action films and and fighting sequences and, um, you know, with ropes and pulleys and train strings and all of that. All of that is very exciting. It's a lot of hard work. I don't even pretend that I can just step in there and do it, like, tomorrow. Um, but I, if I was given the opportunity tomorrow, I would give it my all. <laughs> <Because that's laughs> just, I, I look, so look forward to doing that in the future. Hopefully which, which in the future. I, which, which, which I think they give a lot of uh, they give a lot of uh, actors actresses a, a lot of leeway or and enough time to either tone up for work out to do or you know practice before you actually you know put it down or whatnot. But you know some, something to something to shoot for. I mean I think I think that would be good. And you know what? Just you know I'm not saying this because you know I'm I'm, I'm becoming a, a, a appreciative guy of the work that you do. But you know you got the 
you got the look of, you know, you, you can pass for Storm. You, you get you get the little <laughs> hair action thing going, and you know, look, I can I can I'm looking in your eyes right now. Not no pun intended, but literally, I'm looking at one of your pictures, and I'm like, wow, like you know what? You can play that. You can play that. Yes, Good. I would love to do that. <laughs> one Good. day, looking forward. One to day, it. one day, and that one day is going to be real soon, real soon. So, with with all things that's going on, like before I let you go with the last question, how do you manage just you know your your private time with all the millions of different things that you're doing? How do you how do you juggle uh, the role that you have gotten um, and getting in your personal life? Uh, I don't do that very well. <laughs> I live a very boring life, which is crazy considering everything that I do. Um, I don't really, like I said in the beginning, I'm an introvert, so I don't really get out there and, and network like I should or just get out there, period. Um, that's something I really need to work on, just being completely honest with you. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it hasn't been an issue um, up to this point. Let's just say that. Well, you you you're actually uh you know you say you're an introvert, but you know I I you know hey you're you're you who's gonna know you better than you? But you know I think uh you know we're actually getting to know you well, which is a good look, and and I think that's a, a plus when it comes to uh, just getting out there doing certain different things and whatnot, and I think that's a you know, that's just going to that's gonna be a, a great look for you later. So, you know, you say you're an introvert. I don't believe it. You're you're approachable. You're approachable. You know, you, don't, you, you, you and I, we, we easily connected. Not. We easily connected. It was it was great from day one. So, you know, it's, yeah, you're not closed off to the world, sweetheart. Just keep that in mind. You're You're good. You're good. Uh, good. Thanks for the confirmation. But I, I really do hear in my personal life, I do hear that I'm unapproachable, and I don't know what what that's all about. Wow. But I've I've heard wow. that forever. Okay. Well, you know, we just hit it off, but I could be the first one to say I don't believe that. I don't care how long they've known you. <laughs> I don't think so. Listen to this young lady right now. You guys are listening. She's smiling. She's laughing. She's joking around, you know what I'm saying, and she's about her business. So, <laughs> I mean, people, I'm just saying, there's no introvert in my book. Like, you got it, dear. You got it. You're good. You're good. <laughs> but anything you would like to mention, too, that have been following you in your career so far and the new people that have logged in listening to your interview, what would you like to say to them? Well, I wanted to put in a quick plug for some things that I have out right now for them to check out, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So I'm in a a series called Music and Murder, which is now airing on Amazon Prime um, and Amazon Instant Video. Uh, We have two episodes up right now. We're about to start shooting the third one. That one we're filming in Atlanta, and uh, I'm excited about that project. It's basically about music and murder. Someone in the music industry who's been accused of murder, and now she's on trial. And I play the assistant district attorney uh, who was actually trying to get her boss this job. So it's kind of a side story. But um, I like the script. It's it's awesome um, show. So I hope you check that out. It's Music and Murder on Amazon Prime and Amazon Instant Video. I'm also in a web series right now that's airing. It's on YouTube, so you can get it any time, called Lover's Lane. Now, there are two of them out there, and I am in the one for Victory Productions, not the other one. (laughs) So look up (laughs) Victory Productions, and you'll find it. And in that one, I play an attorney also um, who's engaged to a guy who's finding out some secrets about his past that he didn't even know existed. So that's one, one of the side stories, too. Um, sorry about that project too. Drama. Yeah, drama, drama. drama. <laughs> um, and if you're in the D.C. area, you can check me out on TV and a couple of commercials for um, the health department and for insurance companies. And if you're in the North Carolina area, you can check me out at the pump. <laughs> I have a commercial airing right now for um, one of the gas stations is here. Uh, so while you pump your gas, you'll see my face on the screen. And let's see. I'm sure there's some other stuff. And I always forget. See, this is why I have my resume open in front of me so I know 
what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, let's see, I mentioned, yeah, I think I might have covered them all. If I didn't, somebody would tell me about it. <laughs> Whoever's. And, and, and not only that, like, people can go to com and they can check out the entire exactly. profile. But I got to tell you, too, like, Demo Real, I've seen that because I haven't had a chance. I'm going to check out the Amazon Prime series. And the funny thing is, before we even uh, set the interview up, that was the one thing that I actually uh, had that I was going to check out. And then, lo and behold, you're on it. So I'm like, okay, perfect. So I wound up getting Amazon Prime, that being one of the reasons. But also, uh, you know, now that I know that you're actually there, I'm actually going to check those two episodes out. That's cool. Yes. That would be awesome. We're, we greatly yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> no doubt. And then yeah, the demo so reels you got on, on the IMDb, mm-hmm. the demo reels you got on there is awesome too, by the way. So just, you know, props for that. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I actually edit my own demo reels, so I'm trying to get into that that um, area of production as well. There's a lot. That's another interview <laughs> for another time. <laughs> Oh, I did well, miss, you know I what? Did miss one. Let me throw one more uh-huh. in there. Um, uh-huh. There's a series called the Wicked Series. Um, you can check it out on wickedfilmseries.com. And there's a three, that's a trilogy right now. And I'm in the third one, Legacy of the Wicked. And you have to check that one out. That one, I guess, would be a little crazy in the beginning. Um, nice. And then, then show people uh who I really am at the end. So check that one out. It's called Legacy of the Wicked and it's available on YouTube right now. Um or on our website which is wickedfilmseries.com. dot com. That is all of them <laughs> that's currently out. Nice. Nice. I'm looking forward to it and everything that's on your uh on your on your plate that's coming up uh you know to finish up twenty sixteen and going into twenty seventeen and then more future gigs on your horizon as far as everything that's going on and um i not only appreciate you hanging out with all the listeners out there listening i'm sure there's going to be a flood of people saying you know what hey great interview but also people that's on her website right now see your website is super addicting and this is like for two reasons one because you know you you got your pictures up there obviously you're a beautiful woman of course but also that 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 uh that water, like, coming right at you with the sand and all that good stuff, like, you know, how addicting is that? Like, I, I, I just, you know, I had this I had this on, on my screen for, like, you know, all day today, but I think it's going to stay there. Like, it's it's gonna, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out. I love like, water. It's very, very, um, very peaceful and, you know, very soothing. So uh, I, I, I guess that's your personality, right? So <laughs> that's just you. <laughs> As yes, I love the water. It's very calming. That's but thank you very much for having me on your show. I really appreciate this opportunity and getting um, to talk to you for a bit. Same here. This is fun, and and please come back. And anybody that's trying to, that's you me. know, go on this, I'm 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 the card carrying member of Team AJ. And if anybody else <laughs> is down too, let's just make sure that we we turn this into a movement. And uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and get this woman more roles, and so we can be able to see her do bigger and better things. And um, you know, you got somebody here that's supportive. So, you know, anything you need, not just from the station, but in general, we'll we'll talk offline, and you know, we'll stay connected. But um, I'm just proud of you. I'm proud of you because you know I know there's you know other women out here doing things like you are, but also you are one of the one of the the you know the ones that I feel like a lot of us should be inspired by as well, just based off of your effort. Look at look at how you, you continue to try, and look at how you continue to work, look at how you continue to uh, give back, and, uh, and and to me, I think that's that's a beautiful thing to be a part of. So I'm I'm not only proud to know you, but I can't wait to work with you. And you know we're we're you know off to a great start, closing out 2016, going into the new year. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to what we have coming forward. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. AJ, I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. All right, you do the same. That is the beautiful, talented Yana Johnson. She goes by the name of AJ. Make sure you check out her website, yanajohnson.com. If you don't know how to spell it, I'll spell it for you right now. A Y A N A Johnson.com. <laughs> More music, taking phone calls right here. Next Legacy.